This will be a showcase of my favorite strategy. It is really easy to mess up because you need quite a lot of knowledge of the spawn mechanics. It also requires a lot of micromanagement, especially with your workers. In addition, you have to look at your gold resources. You also have quite a small window to get the timing right and those mistakes get punished very hard. That's why I recommend this strat only to pro players. Either way, I shall be covering a lot of aspects, so this video may be useful for newer players as well. You have a the weaknesses of these strategies are, in early games you don't have that much firepower, your expansion is delayed, you need a lot of gold and you have to manage that very well. It also requires a lot of micromanagement and a high action per minute. The strengths of the strategies are you will have an extremely fast sin generation. At mid game your expansion will almost explode due to all the mana you unlock and your spirit workers. You'll have a decent army at the beginning and a large and strong army in mid and late game. It is also very flexible, so you can choose between the Behemoth, Archon and Colossus. And your mid game is just about 5 to 7 minutes long. Now to the unlock order, because this strategy is very flexible there are some different approaches. I will start with the part which is always the same. After that I will show three different ways you can go with it. With your first three sins unlock the archive, beast then and obey. After that barracks as soon as possible. With the next sin you can either unlock prophecy or enrage. After that the alchemy lab, walk a lot, annex, then either the underminer or arena, depends on what you're focusing on. Next is magical meat and then beast and upgrade. Now things can vary. I will continue with the safest way, which I call Wrath Push with Potion Support. You continue with Amber Rift, Outpost and then the Behemoth. After the Titan Egg, mid game starts and now you have to decide what's more important to you. If you need additional firepower, go for the Foundry. If you want to expand faster, get spirit workers. If you are already fighting, get a prison. And if you want additional efficiency, go for wisdom choose. I recommend going for spirit workers because you lack gold and you would not have expanded very much yet. Then go for the foundry for more firepower. That means you will win your fights easier. Further to Chandos are good tanks, which are needed to compensate your crack pots. This is especially important because you lack in melee units. Then I would go for the prison because I will most likely fight at this point or at least start baiting. Then I would continue with wisdom choose. It isn't essential, but if you start spamming spirit workers you want to level your crackpots, and that's why I choose Wisdom Choose. Your minions are under attack. There's also a different approach which I consider a greed push in its true form. You continue with Spirit Workers, then Ember Rift, Foundry, then whatever you want to spend your next three sins. And then you can choose between the Archon or the Colossus. In between the Foundry and the Titan, 
I like to unlock stuff which I might need in a later state. I suggest those things to unlock in no specific order. Prison, because it's always good to have. Wisdom choose for leveling up your crackpots. Tavern, because why the fuck not, I want my gold back. Sanctuary with Avarice, because I don't give a fuck about the tavern, I want more gold. Lastly, the outpost to get better positioning. If you want to go slus for whatever reason, I recommend unlocking in this order. Spirit Walkers, Amber Rift, Foundry, Blade Lotus, Rampart, Forge, then the Colossus if you prefer to have an early Titan, then the Garrison, Gargoyle, Foundry Upgrade, Sentinel, Well of Souls, and in the end the Eternal if you didn't go for the Colossus earlier. Here's an example for a fully fleshed out unlock order so that you have a rough idea how insane this strategy can be. You start with Archive, Beast then Obey, then go Barracks, Prophecy, Archimilab, work a lot. At this point it's around 4 minutes and 30 and that's where mid early game starts. Continue with Annex, then Underminer or Arena, depends on which one you want to unlock first. Magical Meat, Beast and Upgrade. At this point it's around 6 minutes and there we have late early game. Go on with Amber Rift, Spirit Workers, Foundry, Prison, Sanctuary, Everest, and then summon the Archon. This should happen around 8 to 9 minutes, and that's the point where mid game starts. So carry on with unlocking the Blade Lotus, Rampart, Forge, Garrison, Gargoyle, then Foundry Upgrade, Sentinel, and the Vampire Retool. You could be there around 30 to 14 minutes and that's where late game starts. Just continue with unlocking the torture chamber and spirit chamber and now you have outtaked your opponent. Now the part where I explain stuff. I start with the part which is always the same. At the very beginning it is all about using the early game rule to your advantage. Means getting many units really fast so that the global timer kicks in. I will link the video in the description where I explain the early game rule. You start with digging out a 3x3 area for your archive. When you dug out this room, dig out another room for your beast then. And when this room is dug out, continue with digging out another room for your barracks. And when this area is claimed, place an archive as soon as possible, because you want to have a room before you have claimed the portal. That's because you want to get a minion spawn out of it immediately. Let me demonstrate this quickly. Obeying so it's quicker. Now you got your cultist immediately out of it. Now you can place a beast then because you want to have first your cultist and then your beast then. And now you got an Oculus. When you got your first Oculus you turn it off. And when this room is dug out you now place at barracks as soon as possible and then turn off gnarling spawn that's because you want to have your cultist 
train from the beginning. And you want to have two cultists before you get your first gnarling. Now I got my second cultist. I can turn on gnarling spawn again. Let one gnarling spawn and then turn it off again. And now I make sure that I will have two barrack props. So I have a three by five room because I will have four minions training at the time in the barracks at the beginning. And when I got this room three by five, I will increase the archive to five by five and will start reinforce the walls. Meanwhile, my cultists are training. Meanwhile, I chain obey them. So now I got my gnarling, I will turn off gnarling spawn again. And I uh, reinforce the walls of my archive because I want the efficiency boost. Let me demonstrate this quickly. One prop has now an efficiency boost of 250%. That will increase my sin generation. Now I will wait for my third and fourth cultist to spawn and meanwhile I keep on obeying those cultists who are inside my barracks. When my fourth cultist spawn, I will have those two cultists already at level 3. Let me demonstrate this quickly. When they are level 3, I will drop them into my archive because I want them to train now. And when I got my 5x5 archive, I will prepare and 3x3 three three area to place an alchemy lab when I got my fourth cultist. Let me demonstrate quickly. I got my fourth cultist here and now I will place my archive. When I place my archive, it should be near the workalot potion. And when I get my first crackpot, I should just have unlocked my workalot potion. Where's my crackpot? Here it is. And now I will increase this room to have at least three alchemy props. I like to have four because then I have a bigger window to keep on the alchemy brewing. So now when I got my first workload potion ready, I would have just got my third cultist to level three. My second cultist should be at level two. And they all should train here. And meanwhile I'm doing all this, I have to keep an eye on my beast then, because I want to increase it. Because when my beasts die, I will be dead. Because these skarks are my spine and my early game tanks. So always keep an eye on that and increase it when you have time to think about. So. Now, when I got my second crackpot, make sure that I turn on gnarling spawn again. And also decide if you use the underminer or the arena first. If you go for the arena, you have a bigger window for getting a fluent minion spawn out of it. But if you go for the underminer, make sure you have enabled gnarling spawn again. Because Perhaps you want to claim this mana shrine, that's why you want to unlock the underminer first. So now when we have unlocked the arena, we want to level up the Skarks because they are our main tanks at the early game. And now you can start spam brewing workload potion and drop all your four cultists there and drop it. Perhaps you already have unlocked magical meat before, so collect all your intelligent units, drop them and then use magical meat on them. That will help keeping your cultists inside your archive. Your crackpots will um, continue brewing workload potion, your gnarling will keep on training and your beastmaster won't be angry that early. And when you are at the 
beast an upgrade, make sure that you turn off shadows. Shadows are glass cannons. They deal a lot of damage but die really fast. So you don't want to do that. But you want to keep your Bethus because they deal a lot of damage. Spirit workers ready. Revelation unlocked. Outpost unlocked. Now I just give infos about the aspects and how and why you might want to use them. Brewing spirit workers. You need to spread like crazy and gain as much gold and ground as possible. This slows down your opponent's expansion and grants you a better view of what's going on. Spirit walkers are your main income resource until all the gold in the entire map is mined. Build one or two ember rifts if you want to stay on the safe side. At this point your opponent could harass you with bombards. When you have one or two prepared, you can recover and later outtech your opponent. They are very costly, so it's best to use prophecy early to see if your opponent has a foundry. Build a foundry. You need tanks and chandos are exactly that. Moreover, they produce defense parts which you might need for sentinels or for defenses to gain extra firepower. Furthermore, you can throw your chandas inside the arena. They are tanks so they will survive for quite a while. The prison should be a no-brainer. For this threat you will use all your level 1 and level 2 prisoners to summon vampires. The rest will be burned in the torture chamber to get spirits. Then level up your vampires with spirits in the spirit chamber. Wisdom Juice is a nice potion to train your crackpots with, so that they will brew potions even faster. The Sanctuary will be useful, so unlock it when you have sins to spare. Sentinels are just here to outnumber your opponent, but don't overshoot it. It depends on your playstyle and your plan on how many of them you can handle in your dungeon. Now I will cover the defenses briefly. Bombards are often used to claim ground without worrying about enemy workers. Also as fire support in battles and as well as bait. Blade Lotus will be used to separate units and also as a damage sponge. Bone Chiller is only good in a huge blob fight. Use it like you would use Quick Freeze. Build it, activate it, forget about it. It will freeze all enemy units for a short time. Rampart. Use it as a distraction or as a damage sponge. Gargoyles are damn powerful. They can change the outcome of a battle really quickly. Well of Souls can be used both to attack and defend walls from enemy workers. Placing it in or near to corridors is the best way to deal damage to enemy units. The fact that it has a large amount of health allows it to survive for a long time. Now about Titans. The Behemoth is the Titan you can summon the fastest, but he is, alongside the Colossus, the weakest. The Archon is beside the Tool the strongest Titan, it's usually a safe pick. The Colossus is a counter to the Archon, he gets mostly underrated or just gets played wrong. The thing about the Colossus is, he needs to be healed constantly with guild. Meanwhile your ranged unit deals the damage. With Sentinels in addition, he becomes a real threat, because you have a solid wall. The Eternal is the least accessible Titan, because Sloth is an optional tree. But he is also by far the strongest Titan. Just get him in a somewhat decent position and keep him fresh. Due to all the debuffs, 
the enemy Miller unit will die pretty fast. As I mentioned earlier, the strategy allows you to gain sins very fast, at the trade-off for a delayed expansion. Therefore, you must consider the map carefully before choosing whether to play the strategy or not. As ever, remember to adapt to the map and the conditions. The rest of this video will just be teasing the AI. So have fun watching and trying out the strategy for your own. Cannot lock enough mana. Not enough mana. Gnarling lost. Your minions have engaged the enemy. Skarg lost. Insufficient manner. Wisdom juice ready. Your alchemy lab cannot store any more potions. Your minions have researched a sin for you. You have discovered a gateway. Your minions have entered battle. Insufficient lockable mana. Work a lot, ready. Skarg lost. You cannot lock enough mana. Vampire ready. You have claimed a gateway. Vampire activated. A vampire has entered your dungeon. A new sin has been researched. Defense built. Insufficient mana. Your bombard is under attack. Work a lot, ready. Not enough lockable mana. A minion has entered your dungeon.
A new sin is available to you. Wisdom juice ready. Your bombard is under attack. An enemy is summoning an Archon. Wisdom juice ready. You've received a new sin. Wisdom juice ready. Cannot lock enough mana. Vampire ready. Your bombard is under attack. Vampire activated. Spirit chamber unlocked. Work a lot ready. Yet another sin for you to spend, Underlord. Your bombard is under attack. Necromancer has entered your dungeon. You have discovered a gateway. Your minions are in combat. Your bombard is under attack. the gateway. A new sin has been researched. Your minions are in combat. Vampire ready. Vampire activated. You've gained an additional sin. A succubus has entered your dungeon. Work a lot, ready. Wisdom juice, ready. Your minions have researched a sin for you. Your mana is too low to lock. attack. Wisdom juice ready. You've got another sin to use, Underlord. 
Time to pay your minions, Underlord, for all their hard work. You have unspent sins, Underlord. Empower your wicked ways by unlocking a new aspect within the veins of evil. You've discovered a siege shrine. A witch doctor has entered your dungeon. Your minions are under attack. You've claimed a siege shrine. Not enough mana. An enemy has summoned an Archon. Gnarling lost. Your bombard is under attack. A new sin is available to you. Too low to lock. Your underminer is under attack. Underminer is under attack. An enemy's Archon has been vanquished. The enemy assaults your dungeon. You have destroyed an enemy's dungeon core. Well done, Underlord.